What up, guys? Your boy Quake. We're back with a brand new episode of the Diverse Mentality Podcast. Episode 100. Wait, wait who is it? Why, YG's 400. So who's 100? We are. That's true, but I mean, <laughs> we are. Simple Chief Keith is 300. There's got to be somebody that's 100. It's Vita 100. Oh, 50. And the verse said, I'm 100. Remember on the YG, I want a Ben's record? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 50 said, I'm 100. Yeah, YG I like that record, man. I wish they would have shot a music video. They should have shot a music video. Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Nipsey on there, too? Yeah, it was Nipsey, Nipsey YG, and 50. YG, and 50. Oh, man. Yeah. That's, that's oh. I want a Benz. I want a Benz. My friends. All right. My friends. Shoot up. I'm titling this episode, Rick Ross Goes Double Plastic. I am. Can you just leave him alone? Bro? I win. I Bro, won, dude. I won. I told you on the last episode. We got to put that up. No, man. I'm, I'm trolling. Yeah, I probably do at least 30,000. I said on the last episode, you changed. I said fifteen thousand to Oops. twenty at best, thirty thousand. And guess what he's projected to do right now? Twenty-two thousand copies till thirty thousand. He's not going to do thirty thousand, by the way, because usually when they project it, they never go. It never goes to that top projection. It goes in the middle. He's probably going to do twenty-five thousand copies, which is a flop. He's on a major record label. He has major label features. Flop. Yeah, that is that is a flop, man. And we'll talk if you don't about do over fifty thousand. Your flop on a major label. That's yeah, flop. That's one hundred percent flop. At least 50000 on a major label. At minimum, that should be... This is Rick Ross. Apparently, this guy's one of the biggest bosses and biggest rappers ever. Anyways, we'll get... Well, I'll talk about that later because I want to go yeah, in. I was about to say something, but... <clears throat> shout out to Dr. Dre, man. Yeah, man. He's shout back. out to Dre. We back. He is back, man. Really back. And he announces his new album with Marsha Ambrose. I don't know who that is. I'm going to be... No disrespect to her. I have no idea who that you gotta is. got to be kidding me. He's dropping out? Um, she was a floor to... Low try singer, F L O E T R Y singer, um, and he announced the album title is called the Casa Blanco. That's a dope ass album title. That's I like very, that album. Yeah, yeah. He said I just re- re- finished recording an album with Marsha and Burns. He wrote um, Casa Blanco. I had a blast. This is some of my best work. Was that picture of one uh, with the people in the background? Yeah, violins, yeah. violins and stuff. Yep. Damn, it's about to be Casa Blanco. Speaking of. More Dr. Dre GTA. <laughs> so the GTA uh, extension, the contract, which has Dr. Dre in it, uh, is officially has been officially released, and it came with six brand new tracks, which I haven't listened to all of them. By the way, I need to listen to them. Mm-hmm. Um, but they've been leaking, and a lot of the links have been getting removed because I think they want to keep it in GTA right now. Yeah, until I'm They're probably not going to release the streaming service. Who knows? But it, they've been getting the links online have been getting removed a lot. But it's been six tracks, uh, one called Gospel featuring Eminem, one called Diamond Mine featuring Nipsey Hussle and Ty Dolla oh Sign, my which God. is dope. You got a Nipsey Hussle verse. Have you heard it yet? No, they've been oh. every time they've been posting, they've been getting removed. Damn. Uh, ETA featuring Snoop Dogg and Anderson Pack, the Scenic Route featuring Rick Ross and Anderson Pack, and then Black Privilege and Falling Up. Where's Fifty Cent? I hope we get Fifty on a record with them. Come it's, on. Yeah, it's really ridiculous. Post is there. So yeah, he has Rick Ross, which is. The flop in William Roberts. He's got him on there, oh, but he doesn't man. have a legend on there. Like, fifty. Uh, Dr. J lost his ways, man. Yeah, man. But I think these records, at least based off the leaks and people's comments, they're really enjoying it, man. They're really, people are liking it. It took so. a divorce for this guy to drop something. I know. It's always pain. Pain, <laughs> oh, pressure, pressure creates diamonds. So he's probably being pressured to money and stuff. And he's like, yo, I'm a, not, not, not that he's broke. I'm not saying he's broke, but I'm just yeah, saying, yeah. like, it, you know, it, that pressure can create special things. So, uh, those six tracks are out right now. They're leaked online. We don't know if they're going to be on streaming platforms. I'll let you guys know on s- Monday's episode um, because that's usually when we go over go over the new music. So, if they do go on streaming platforms, I'll let you guys know. But those are the six tracks. Um, yeah, Eminem, Nipsey Hussle, Ty Dolla Sign, Snoop Dogg, Anderson Pack, Rick Ross. So beautiful. I love yeah. it. I got to hear the Nipsey record. I got to hear them all. Yeah, all of them. But the Nipsey Gross. caught my attention immediately. Yeah, man. We've been waiting for Nipsey music for... It sucks that all these things happen like after he died. It's like, why didn't Dr. Dre and Nipsey also work earlier? Seriously, man. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's like a he's a West Coast artist. I think what was crazy, there was a story of Dr. Dre, uh, somebody pitching Nipsey Hussle to Dr. Dre, and Dr. Dre wasn't interested at the time. No way. Yeah, he just didn't want to, didn't like the music. So. I don't know, maybe he didn't see yeah. the vision. I mean, Dr. Dre can't fucking get it all right all the time. Yeah, no, of course, man. So you just probably didn't see the vision and didn't understand it. And to be to be fair, and this is no disrespect to Nipsey, he wasn't as big after until when he died, he got way bigger. Like when he died, no, he, no, got, he was still big. The album like debuted was, at number four. When he died, it went up to number two, which is higher than his 
when he was alive. Of course, that's going to happen. Yeah. But that's my point. It's like right. debuting at number four. He was still dropping some good It was big. Don't get me wrong. But he not. Like doing shows. He was decent. never mainstream, is my point. Yeah, yeah. He was never mainstream. Um, so would you say that song with Roddy Rich? Uh, Racks in the Middle? Yeah, that made him kind of started making him Yeah, mainstream. that's what I'm saying. If he would have stayed alive, he would have been a lot more mainstream by now. A lot more. Oh, 100%. Yeah, because he was yeah. working towards that. You know, Racks in the Middle sound and like And more. I think he was putting himself... Out more, more. Yeah. yeah. Puma like, and all these deals. Yeah, Puma, ones. Crypto, all the kinds of stuff. So, yeah, it's just, you know, you never know what the trajectory. But that story about Dr. Dre not being interested in him was interesting to me, at least. Yeah. Like West Coast, usually Dr. Dre is. Somebody needs to ask him that. Yeah. Man, what happened with that, man? I don't know, man. I just wasn't seeing, like, you know, rich gang shit. And Dr. Dre is very, he said, for artists, he looks at voices. That's what he looks at the most. If the voice is unique, I, he can do something with it. If it's not unique, he's like, oh. 50 had that slur because the bullets. Eminem had that tick, 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 like, like, like crazy, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Snoop Dogg had a nice, like, laid back. Everybody had, everybody that was associated, the game has the game, like a different voice. He likes yeah. different voices. They're heavy and, yeah. yeah. So that's Dr. Dre's formula is the voices. Interesting. Shout out to Dr. Dre, man. I can't wait for the album. Yeah. Thank uh, you, Dre, for dropping something. Bobby Schmurda. Schmurda. He's, he's doing, uh, he, there's some real shit, man. And I posted really? this on my Instagram because there's some real shit. He said I made my biggest hit which is the hot guy record. Uh, he recorded it in one hour, and it cost him only $20 to make. The song ended up wow. being number six on the Billboard Hot 100. It's five times platinum with over 777 million YouTube views. So the reason why he said this is too many people, he said, got a dream that they never chased. Then go through life and be angry they never tried it. And I know a lot of people like that. They get mad because they never chase their dreams, and they hate on other people. Um, he said, let me remind y'all, the hot guy took... $20 for one hour studio time in the hood to create. And that one hour of focus changed my life and everyone around me forever. And that's facts. That's gangsta. That blew him up. Respect. Yeah, so that, I just, I like the way he worded that and kind of told people that, listen, man, one hour, one hour can change your life. That's true, man. In life, anything, any, any minute, within a minute, something can change drastically, which is crazy, which is cool and kind of crazy and kind of depressing at the same time because anything can happen. So, yeah. Right. Master P also decided to uh, inspire people as well. He said he started his No Limit record label, which is $10,000. So you don't have to have a lot of money to do that. $10,000. So, $10,000. Wow. Yeah. I mean, but you, you would think. Back then, 10 grand was like 30. Inflation. Yeah, so you think now it's probably different. That you can't. It's way cheaper now. Look at Bobby Schmurter, $20. Started a record label? $20, bro. You record a whole record and blew up. Now yeah, I mean, recorded. I mean, a record label is like, right now, who gives a fuck about record labels, to be honest yeah. with you? Record labels don't even, like, you just as an artist, you can literally buy the cheapest shit ever and become big. Everybody's done that. Now it's even easier than back then. Back then, it was like, you actually had to work to get somewhere, sell CDs out to your trunk, meet record label executives, finally get signed to a major label, finally get on BT, MTV, VH1, all these, you know, it yeah. took like radio and all this stupid process. Now, just like, streamline direct to the person, there's no... No middleman of radio. There's no facts, you know. So, um, going over the article, famed investor Warren Buffett is one of the wealthiest people in the world, with a net worth of roughly a hundred billion dollars. In 1960, the Omaha native uh, asked a group of ten doctors to invest ten thousand, and wound up with eleven. Buffett pooled their money with a poultry of one hundred original investment of his own. Uh, just two years later, Buffett was a millionaire uh, with excess of seven point one million, of which over one million belonged to Buffett. He merged all of his partnerships into one, then invested in, and eventually took control of the textile manufacturing firm Berkshire Hathaway, which now owns Geico, Duracell, Dairy Queen, BNSF, uh, Lou Brazil, Fruit of Loom, and many other lucrative companies. Much like Buffett, Masterpiece started his own no-limit empire with just 10000 investment. In a recent interview with Hip Hop DX, the buzzing entrepreneur looked back on those early days when he was just a wide-eyed teenager desperately wanting to escape the poverty that surrounded him in New Orleans projects. After inheriting the small chunk of money from his deceased relative, he moved to Richmond, California, where he opened No Limit Records. He said, that's all how it all started. I was this 19-year-old kid with a record store in Richmond, California, and built it. You know, it was tough building that process and growing it. You don't have to have a lot of money. Everybody thinks you need millions of dollars to start a business. So I started No Limit with $10,000, and it turned into a multi-million dollar empire. Went from selling no records to selling over 100 million records. The blessing you got to dream big. Yeah, you got to. You just got to dream big. That's facts. 
That's inspiring. According to a 2021 article by Forbes, Masterpiece's current net worth totals to at least 200 million. Gangst. 200 mil. What? And he's always been like, I don't know, he's just always been cool with lots of people and just kind of trying to educate people on. Yeah. Um, I yeah. just wish he would be more, he would do more with the newer artists, kind of make music with newer artists and kind of just get involved a little bit more. But he does do that. It's just It's more like behind the scenes. You don't really see it. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't see Master P like out with like Young and Ace or Lil Durk and like out here. Like, you see 50. You I just, think he, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I, I know what you what you mean. Yeah, yeah. like 50 is Durk yeah. right now. Like, he's he did video with Roddy Rich. Like, he's there and he's talking to people. But yeah, just shout out to Master P though. He's a beast, man. Yeah, I think he's just more low key behind the scenes and he's doing like, I don't even know what he's doing right now, to be honest. Like, he's selling, uh, what is it, those uh, snacks, rap snacks? and Yeah, he's doing like things like that. Like, um, and he's working a lot with his kids too. Yeah, mostly basketball, you know, basketball Romeo. and whatever room. Yeah, he's not really fucking with too many artists and shit. He's probably doing behind the scenes to be fair though. So yeah, shout out to Master P. Yeah, Master P. Shout out to that crazy deal you had. You were a fucking legend for that. Yeah, that actually sent the blueprint for Birdman. Birdman. So shout out to Birdman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is a funny ass study, and I actually enjoyed reading this because it was just something that. So Drake uh, makes people run slower. And any other musician <laughs> study finds. Like treadmill runs slower? Yeah. So, and I've heard studies of this before. Like, if you listen to music, it actually it pumps you up to yeah. work out. Yeah. Like, people said, I think they were doing a study on In the Club, which is see. crazy. In the Club was actually a record that really motivated people because the beat, yeah. dun, dun, I yeah, guess, because no, no. in the video, he's in the gym, too. So, I don't know if that ties in. But this, they're saying anything Drake makes people run slower. <laughs> Because it's That's depressing. It's like sad music. It's like slow. I would, I don't know. Yeah, I, I never listen to Drake while I'm working out. It's rare. I have a couple of times, and I would have to agree with that, man. I can hear knife talk. I gotta feed the streets. My pistol can bleed. Like it's like more aggressive. It has to be an aggressive record. Like uh, I mean, but he's got some records like here and there. But yeah, it's, like like I want to listen to Marvin while I'm working too. out, like crying <laughs> while I'm working. Yeah. Out. <laughs> That's yeah. yeah so you, you need someone with more, more little mm. punch kick Mayweather style. Yeah, rich game, aggressive content. Let's just yeah. say that. For my cross country team, our coach had a uh, Jay Z, Nine on Problems, yeah. Pilot Tiger. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the stuff we. Yeah, our coach. Yeah, our coach is playing all yeah. kinds of records. It's crazy. The article says a new study has shown runners shouldn't add Drake to their workout playlist anytime soon. Hmm. Uh, the sportswear and lingerie retailer Poor, I don't know how to pronounce this. Poor Moy uh, performed a study that analyzed the data of sixty runs completed by a group of joggers who listened to a different artist for each session. The study showed runners can run the fastest to Beyonce, shaving two minutes and 45 seconds off their three-mile run, and the slowest to Drake. Runners who jog to the Canadian rap star experience a 6% increase in their running time. This means in the course of a marathon, listening to Drake could add almost 15 minutes to a runner's final time. Damn. Why did they even do these studies? Like, what's the point of this shit? Yeah, just fun facts. It's fun, yeah. yeah. It's not just Drake, though. The study also showed runners should avoid listening to Doja Cat and Nicki Minaj as well. Doja added an additional 25 seconds to a three-mile run, and listening to Nicki was shown to add an additional one minute and 24 seconds to a runner's final marathon time. The results show that your running workout could be over half a minute quicker per kilometer when listening to Queen B, the study said. This might be just some propaganda put in. Beyonce up there. <laughs> that means you could have run a three mile route, two minutes and forty five seconds faster than usual, which equates to shaving twenty three minutes off a marathon. Uh, aside from making runners slower, Drake recently rekindled his friendship with Kanye. Yeah, yeah. That was a totally off. Topic. I don't believe that Beyonce shit, man. Run. Why do they just study, study Beyonce runner? and these people? Yeah, like, study uh, like forty five seconds off the. Three. No, I music does play a role. Oh no, definitely in emotions and a lot yeah. of shit, man. It's crazy. People don't realize how much control music has over people, man. So, I believe this because Drake's music, for the most part, like eighty percent of it is not anything that you can get hyped up. Like when I listen to DMX, I just want to fight. Yeah, DMX. I yeah. just want to knock somebody out. There's a record by Ti called "Hurt." That I, oh my god, that record. Ba, 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 da, 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 da. That shit is just that. That yeah. record always for working out just works, never stops. Or even that TIM record. Or game one blood. Yeah. One blood. Nah. Boom, I, boom, I can... boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I, like I don't that. know about working out with that. I don't know what to me, man. Your game, yeah. Dr. Dre, like all this shit. Says. Came back to black, so yeah, I'm ready so to pop. I don't know why I like the game. Yeah. With me. So there's certain artists that, yeah, they definitely yeah. have. A, no, definitely. Yeah, Drake, slow your ass down. What about Luda, Chris? Luda. Everybody come quick. Yeah, Luda, would, yeah, he has yeah. energy. 
He has a lot of hype. Like I'm trying to think of artists that'd be great to. Um, obviously, Fifty. I think anything aggressive. I think DMX. True, or like uh, really like fast, Daisy. like you fast, know, yeah. like loud, like exciting energy. Um, trying Eminem to think of murdering uh, NBA people. Young boy. NBA young boy. Uh, nah, Lil Durk. Hell, NBA. Um, um, actually, yeah, I take that back. Yeah, King Von. What about Kevin Gates? Kevin Gates, 100. percent Yeah, he's got some. Yeah, he definitely has uh, a lot of shit. Little bitty B chain. You know, there's a lot of records. So there's quite a bit. I was listening to some Nipsey Hustle doing my abs work. Nipsey Hustle. I forgot about Grinding yeah. All My Life. I like yeah. that record. So yeah, there's a lot of artists, yeah. but for sure. Yeah, so shout yeah, out to too. Yeah. Shout out to Drake making people slower, man. Yeah. Congratulations, Drake. Congratulations, Drake. You're causing people to You're not. making me go behind life. Yeah. I like it. I love it. I need to move forward. Cardi B. Yo, some people were shitting. Some people were shitting on Cardi B in the comments, bro. We were saying, yo, Cardi B, Nicki Minaj better. I don't know. People be why do you guys always got to pit female artists against each other? Why do people got to pit artists, period, against each other? Why can't legends coexist like J. Cole says? For real. Le- legends coexist. Exist. Um, why is it when Drake goes on stage with Kanye, oh, Kanye had better music, Drake's you know, it's garbage. Why is it always like, just enjoy the moment, man. You know, Straight like, up. Why even, here's the craziest thing. Mm-hmm. Skip Bayless. <laughs> Skip tweeted that night when KD dropped a bunch of points. He's like, he's the best player in the world. LeBron, do you see that? You know what Katie did after the basketball game? Immediately tweeted, quoted, tweeted him. He's like, I really hate you. So that guy. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't stand you. Damn, that's gang. Because LeBron's his friend. Kevin Durant, that's yeah. his friend. So why would you shit? You know, why would he like a tweet shitting on his friend and comparing? They're always putting it against each other. It's like, right. bro, we're just basketball players. We enjoy we're, Why do we have to always pit people against each other? It just doesn't wow. make any sense. So he hates him. He's like, I can't stand you, the tweet. He literally quoted. That's what I like about KD. Is he'll go at people. On yeah. Twitter, he doesn't care. LeBron's more like behind the scenes, but that's my point: is why do we got to pit greatness? Like we just got to appreciate everybody that's out I mean, there. But do you think that's kind of his job, though? To like, yeah, it's media's like job. Yeah. It is. But you know, me so. personally, it's like I enjoy everything. Like I enjoy the when I when I saw the Kanye and Drake moment, I didn't think, oh man, Kanye just got way better music than Drake. I just enjoyed the moment. I was like, man, this is dope. You got two of the biggest artists out right now on the stage together. I was right. like, this is cool. I didn't like. When I go to Twitter, all I saw was comparisons. People hating, yo, Kanye is way better, man. Drake got washed. It's like, geez, you guys. Yeah, but I, I think the reason why is because also, like, you have, it's, these are huge artists, man. They're both big. So people are always going to do that. But when you got, like, just some, you know. I like, get that, but it's yeah, still, just appreciate like, it. No, no, yeah. Definitely. Like, just say, how about this? If you're going to tweet comparisons, you'd be like, I really enjoy the show, but I think Kanye just had a better set. Instead of just completely shitting on Drake and not even appreciating what happened. I don't know. Mm. Anyways, Cardi Anyways, B yeah. makes history. Third diamond single. Third. That means 30 million records on three singles. Wow. That is insane. That's yeah. Shout out to Cardi B. Uh, Cardi B's diamonds are dancing. After making history as the first female rapper with multiple diamond records, Cardi B now has three diamond records to her name with the RI certifying the I like it. I like it like that. Record, sorry, just burped. Uh, J Balvin and Bad Bunny as a 10 times platinum on Monday. To celebrate her latest achievement, Cardi hopped on Instagram with a 13 minute session talking to her fans and reliving how much went into the song at the time. Uh, the Latin Ting anthem hit number one on Billboard Hot 100 and landed on her 2018 debut, Invasion of Privacy, with the help of reggaeton powerhouses J Balvin and Bad Bunny. Um, it was also nominated for Record of the Year at 2019 Grammys. So three songs, diamond. Nowadays, it's just songs that are going diamond, not even albums anymore. Yeah, so that's impressive. Yeah, now Very it's good. just singles. Um, so shout out to Cardi B, man, making Cardi history B. once yeah. again. Meek Mill is donating 500000 in Christmas gifts to Philly families in need. By the way, Philly is right now the number one place for violence. I think 500, How'd I wait a minute? 500 people got killed this year in Philly alone. I think Kentucky was like, in the third. My goodness. Yeah, Chicago is no more like the number one. Philly is the number one right now. 500 some people got killed. Something like that. 500 casualties. Hmm. Like shootings and stuff. So, um, crazy. So, Meek Mill helping out the city definitely helps. Um, going over the article, Meek Mill is subject, uh, subjected to a lot of ribbing. Uh, ribbing on social media? What does that even mean? Uh, basically, people just hating. Question. Yeah, but the Dream Chaser founder is actually doing some good in his hometown of Philadelphia. According to a recent Instagram post, Meek is channeling channeling the spirit of Santa Claus and donating five hundred thousand worth of toys to Philly families in need with the help of Patriots owner Robert Kraft, 76ers partner Michael Rubin, 
His managers at Rock Nation, Meek, plans to gift bikes, video game gift cards, laptops, tablets, dolls, and more to dozens of families. The event takes place on Sunday, December 19th, where he'll also be donating another 30000 to the local chapter of 12 Days of Christmas, a volunteer organization supplying families during the holiday season. Yeah, we need more artists like this. Yeah, computers, bikes, toys, coats, and more. Straight up. Uh, Meek Mill is unable to meet up with the lucky recipients. Oh, okay, so this is... I don't know why they always put, like, the old stuff at the article, like, kind of remind us of things. Yeah. I don't know why they do that, but... Shout out to Meek Mill. Yeah, man. 500,000. Thank you, Meek Mill. Yeah. Beast. Hold on, wait a minute. I thought I was finished. Speaking of donating, Jack Harlow, man, this guy, I think... What? And I criticize a lot of white rappers because I just don't like the fast rapping and blah, 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 blah. Like, okay, we get it. You can rap fast. You can do double entendre versus congratulations. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Jack Harlow is a little bit different. It kind of slows rap and it's a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, but this guy is going to be, I think, one of the biggest rappers just because the way he handles himself is very... I can tell... Mm-hmm. This is why I could tell what Dirk would, was going to go further than Chief Keef. The way a certain person handles their business and handles themselves is a lot more clean cut a lot more marketable than a lot of different artists. Like, mark my words, I can see the next five to ten years him being where J. Cole, Drake, and Kendrick are for the new generation. Yeah. Um, here's why. Jack Harlow partners with KFC to donate 250000 to Kentucky Tornado Relief. This just happened, by the way, the tornado. Yeah. Immediately, his Kentucky deal he got, because he's from Kentucky, so he reps Kentucky, mm-hmm. gets a deal with KFC Kentucky Fried Chicken, we and immediately it. partners up to do that deal and donates... And he's doing five shows there and donating the money. Wow. He's the face of KFC right now, bro. And they're using his music. Like, that's crazy. For somebody who only has one hit right now, which is what's popping, that went number yeah. one. That's crazy. It's beautiful. So, uh, let's go over the article. Jack Carlos has teamed up with KFC for a year-long partnership to target, our young, to target a younger audience. Uh, set to be involved in brand campaigns, social media activa- uh, activations. Menu, on you, menu item launches and exclusive experiences. The Louisville rapper is said to usher in a new era for the iconic fried chicken brand, which will be full of surprises for fans over the course course of the next year. I said, growing up, I always dreamed of being the biggest artist to come from Kentucky. Now I'm teaming up with KFC, the biggest brand to come out of Kentucky. For the next year, we're going to do some big things together. The recent tornadoes in Kentucky leaving 74 dead. That's crazy. Jack Harlow, KFC, and its parent company, Yum! Brands, have come together to donate 250000 to American Red Cross for relief efforts. He said it couldn't come up a better time at better time as the state needs our help more than ever in the wake of this past weekend's devastating tornadoes. Together, we will be donating 250000 in support of relief efforts. I ask that you donate whatever you can to help those affected by this tragedy. Nice, man. And then, yeah, he's returning. Congrats, uh, Jack Harlow. Uh, he's returning home in December for his No Place Like Home tour, which will set to, we'll, we'll see him perform in Louisville. Five Louisville venues across five days. So, yeah, this guy, very strategic, man. Very, very corporate in his moves. I can see why DJ Drama got him and gravitated towards him. Good job, Drama. Thank you. Yeah, he ain't, he ain't bullshitting. Uh, this was interesting. I don't know. I just kind of want to briefly talk about this because this was crazy. Um, he is, Chris Brown is in talks to join quality control music. Great move. Which I'm surprised by because Chris Brown is such a big artist. Why would he sign with a label that, I don't know. Like, there's no there's no disrespect to quality control music, but he can kind of, Chris Brown kind of just go independent. He's that big. Yeah, but I mean, maybe. He just doesn't want to deal with it, probably. Yeah, probably. But quality control is the home of rappers such as Migos, Lil Baby, Lil Yachty, and City Girls, with Cardi B also signed under management deal. I don't know what kind of deal it is. It could be something just like Cardi B management deal. Yeah, something like that. Chris Brown released his first four albums, Chris Brown exclusive graffiti fame on Jive Records before the label was absorbed by RCA Records. Uh, then released his next five albums on RCA. So he's always been signed to a major label. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was just yeah. interesting because like, because Chris Brown is huge, man. I don't yeah, think when you think realize, about it, yeah. People don't realize how big this mother- this motherfucker has been consistent since two thousand five. Yeah, let that let that sink in. Yeah. You know how long he that has, is. He has not every album he drops is a hit out of. Yeah, it. there's an, at least one every feature he kills. Yeah, like, I think this guy is. If that incident never well, happened, he would be, he would have been way even more bigger, more corporate, more mainstream, more probably. You know, because he would have been in movies. This guy would have been everywhere, bro. Like this guy, yeah. it's just that incident and then more incidents that followed up from that. Not really into females, but just mm-hmm. him himself. 
fights, gang activity, it just kind of deterred him. People from, forget, man. Yeah. No, saying? I'm just saying, people do forget, but it's the corporate world, they see how much how much they can they control of this person. How reckless is he? You know, yeah. like like 50, if he acts reckless, it's like corporately and it's smart. It's executed the right way. He doesn't just like fucking go out and start shooting shit and gang, right? You know, like it's more like trolling. Well, no, nah, Chris Brown, bro, there's a lot of shit. Remember that when yeah, he went yeah. on live? He's like, man, there's cops outside my house. I think I'm doing crack. Like, like what the fuck, dude? That's You got to yeah. like kind of, yeah, there's yeah, cops yeah, outside I mean, your house. Go outside, address the situation, same. move on. Yeah. You know, there's, Chris Brown is all over the place. But that's not to say he's not a genius. The guy's just, you know. Yeah, CB is. So, yeah, that's, I, I'm, I just want to talk about because I'm interested. Quality control music is a very, I wonder if they can do something for his career to take him to that next level. Because they're very calculated. Quality control knows what the fuck they're doing. Exactly. That's why he goes. And they're very good, man. They take, like, we haven't heard any problems with them ever. We have a little bit. Not I think really, Migos and Lil Baby I, I, had a little bit of issues. I think, what's that guy's name uh, that's always with Migos? Uh, quality control. He's like the manager or he's. Coach K or Pierre P. Oh, my God. He's kind of like short. I don't know. But anyways, um, I lost my train of thought. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I just lost my train of thought. But the, the issues that was happening in quality control at one point was Migos and Lil Baby. Uh, people were saying that a lot of the budget for quality control is going to Lil Baby and pushing him and not Migos. Mm. And there was tension between that. That's the only thing that I've ever heard of quality That's control not, having yeah. issues. But that wasn't even nothing. like, that was just rumors. That That's was just like nothing, public. Yeah. That wasn't anything public. Um that is something. I mean, if, if my budget's if going to... That guy. Now, the only person that's not popping on this label right now is Lil Yachty, which is no disrespect to Lil Yachty, but he's the only one on this label that's signed right now. It's not. City Girls is blowing the fuck up. Cardi B, obviously, we just mentioned Three Diamond Records. Um, so everybody's doing good besides Lil Yachty. Lil Yachty's here and there. So if they get Chris Brown in here, I'm really curious to see how they catapult this guy to the next level. That would be really interesting. But yeah, what were you seeing? No, I'm uh, trying to find the this... Yeah, what's his name, man? Uh... Guy on the right. Yeah, it's Pierre. P. Pierre, that's what yeah, I was about. Pierre yeah. P. That's what I mean. He he like I don't from what I've seen, he's always around the artist. He's always taking care of them. He's yeah. always doing good shit for them. He gets some gifts, you know, like I've seen so many times of that. Yep. You know, he's just he's cool, man. Yeah, make sure yeah. we're good. All right, yeah. I'll keep a, I'll keep an yeah, eye on that. Anyway, shout out to Chris Brown. C B, you're the best. Uh I Lloyd Banks, Dave East, and Vado are set to form an MC Supergroup to reclaim New York hip hop. I do not like this one bit. Please don't do this. No disrespect. I don't like Dave East that much. I like Vado and Banks. Ah, fuck with Dave. Dave East, East is all right. Nah, he's cool, man. What? I don't. I like Vado more than Dave East. Stop. By the way, shout out to Blacklist. They're the post on Hip Hop DX right here. Blacklist. Gangsta. Shout out to them, man. Shout, shout out to George. Out. George, your beast. beast. Yeah. Um, they are on here. They formed. They actually kind of announced the news. <laughs> Blacklist did so shout out to them. Um, yeah, and we got something dope in the works, by the way. <laughs> so Ooh, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna say shit, man. Let me shut up. Too excited. But yeah. Um, on Ooh. Monday, December thirteenth, uh, media company Blacklist took to their Instagram page to announce Davies, Lloyd Banks, and Bottle will join forces as the council. The partnership may be one of the most random pairings, but New York City rap fans are buzzing in wake of the announcement. I personally. I think Banks should really just focus on himself Man, and not guy. go with a group. Banks, you are super talented, but please, bro, just shoot videos and start working more, man. I think yeah. maybe this, because they shot a video for whatever they did together. Yeah, yeah. So maybe this will kind of bring him out more. But why are you, like, this is not the thing you should be doing, man. I'm just, I don't know. That's just my opinion. That's one man's opinion. Who knows? I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about sometimes. This might work. This might be the first time they all get hit records together. And yeah, you never know. That's blow what I was the just thinking up. about, man. Could be a good thing. I just can't see it because, to be honest with you, um, Vado is not main, mainstream. He doesn't like to make mainstream records. Mm -hmm. Banks doesn't like to make mainstream records. Davies doesn't like to make mainstream records. This isn't, He tries. He, he, he does. He does kind of. Votto had one record with Cameron because Cameron was pushing him. That mm -hmm. speaking in tongues record, which blew the yeah. fuck up. The da, 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 remember that record? I don't mm -hmm. know if remember that. That, was that record was ten fire. years ago. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I really like Votto though. I really enjoy his music. He's always been slime. All that shit was amazing. I really enjoyed him. Um, Banks, on the other hand, God bless your soul, but we need to shoot more music videos, please. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, this guy is so talented. And I was just talking about something. With, yeah, I'm not even gonna mention this it. Guy. But. Banks, just please drop some stuff. Uh, never mind. Do more uh, interviews, Banks. Do yeah. more videos. 
you're way too talented to be this. I understand you could 50s. be ten times more richer. I understand fifties frustration. I really yeah. get it. I yeah. no disrespect to banks, but yeah, I just uh, get we it. love you, banks. We're, yeah, we, I was, uh, since bro, I was, I've shown all I've shown is love to this since guy. Since I had a so small like, PP, I was a fan of this. Guy. Come on, bro. Why do you always have to go? All right, sorry, man. Man. always some <laughs> PP this that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, as a trio recently teamed up on Vado's Respect the Jukes which is a record uh, which dropped last month um, Vado spoke about the record and how Davies and Banks were the best choices to get the song off he said Respect the Jukes is taken from, the, from my forthcoming project Long Run 2 but it also will be the title track from a movie which I'll appear in next year this is the soundtrack of the gritty NY street so it's only right I went and got two of the grittiest lyricists to join me in Lloyd Banks and Davies aka Bank Matthews and Dave Hyatt the tracks produced by fellow Harmelit six figure digger. So, uh, but he joins forces with Lloyd Banks and Votto. So we'll see. Um, I can't believe Banks agreed to this. That, that's I can't believe Banks is outside shooting a music video. Yeah, that's yeah, when I saw that photo, I was like, this is actually happening. Yeah, this, this guy is, is actually outside doing something. That is, yeah, it's very surprising, man. I wonder how much money it'll take Lloyd Banks to actually go and promote an album. Like, yeah. probably, this guy, yeah. Anyways, good thing my flow came with a tag. Yeah, the baby gets trash thrown at him during uh, Rolling Loud because they're expecting Future to come out, which is what the fuck. <laughs> what? You know what? You know what? Somebody in the Twitter reply said, uh, "Boo, we got, we got, we didn't want this misogynistic guy. We wanted a different one." It was just funny. Oh, I don't know why. Goodness. That was the funniest shit ever. Um, let's go over the article. The, the baby received less than warm welcome when he stepped on the stage during the final day of Rolling Loud, California. On Sunday, December 12th, the controversial rapper hit the Ciroc stage as a surprise performer and immediately upset fans who were instead expecting future based on the festival schedule. Baby, who was originally scheduled to perform on the Power 106 stage, had reportedly been swapped for future, but it seems the Rolling Loud organizers didn't let the audience know about the switch until it was too late. The baby's appearance was met with booze and garbage being hurled on stage. <laughs> a video of the incident captured the baby with his hand up yelling on the court on the count of three, say, cancel who? Damn. Hmm. Let me see where... Let was that find. also the shoe that was thrown at him? No, that was the, the oh. old event. Yeah, that okay. was... Um, let me see. posted it, so I thought it was recent again. Nah, 50 different one. posting whatever at this point. Let me see. Um, When was this post on December 14th? Yeah, 14th. Where's the... Okay, here it is. Let me make sure my Bluetooth... My Bluetooth connected? No. It's not. It's not connected. You can hear because it it's on my mic, but it, my Bluetooth is not connected. Yeah, I just don't know. Yeah. Let me go. I'm connected to it right now. Is it on at least? Connect to Bluetooth. Huh? There you go. It's connected. All right. You have connection. I know y'all tired of that boring ass shit. It's time for the live show killer. On the count of three, say cancel who? One, two, three. Drop our shit, kid. That ain't the baby. That's that ain't the baby. That's, that's, that's going to be copyrighted, so I can't play the rest of that. Um, the baby. Yeah, they're throwing shit on there. Cancel who? So he doesn't clearly give a flying fuck of what had happened. So mm-hmm. that's the baby for not caring, man. Yeah, man. Baby doesn't give. What do you think about the baby not caring? You don't. What? What do you think about the baby not caring? What am I? What am I supposed to think? <laughs> he just doesn't give a fuck. That's fair. I just wanted you to talk a little bit more. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, Rick Ross uh, taunts 50 Cent over BMF earnings. So, mm. I, f- uh, I don't even want to get into this shit. He's always got something to say. If I get say. into this, I'm going to start going on a rant. I'm going to talk shit. Yeah. But I, I, I'm, I have to get into this. I All right, get to. it. Um, Rick Ross, <laughs> richer than I've ever been. The album's a flop. Let's first get that out the way. And you, like you said, he's doing this because he knows his album. Yeah, the album's flopping. William Roberts, the album is flopping. You're doing twenty two to 30,000 copies with a major record label budget. What's one way to get conversation, buzz around you, so that people know you've even dropped an album? Mention your enemy, your number one enemy, and hope that he responds because he responds to a lot of shit. Fortunately for 50, and thankfully, I'm glad, he doesn't give a shit about Rick Ross says anymore. He's been ignoring him for the past, like, two, three years. Yeah. He hasn't and really said shit. And it's shit. good for him not to respond to Rick Ross. Because he's irrelevant yeah. right now. Rick yeah. Ross is irrelevant. I don't care about yeah. Wingstop. He's going to make it. Yeah, if he responds, he's going to definitely. 
It's going to boost his shit. Make him some money. So let's go over what the Rick Ross did an interview with GQ. To be fair, the GQ person mentioned it. Not Rick Ross. So Rick Ross didn't bring up 50 in this interview. The GQ person did. So that's to be fair. No. Mm-hmm. But Rick Ross could have handled this in a more professional way. But of course, he's going to throw the jabs out there and he's going to say shit. So the interview in GQ uh, said, the interviewer asked, have you been watching BMF, which is 50 Cent's show on stars, considering your own BNF, BMF connection, which means the BMF track. Apparently he has a connection to BMF. Little money fastness. Yeah. So he said, man, I saw the first episode. I was trying to support the homie Meech, incarcerated head of black male family, who's rise, uh, 50 Cent, you know, who basically approved the 50 Cent show. Cap. He said, these guys in the street, um, I'm a real guy. I... I could put my issues with 50s to the side. I know he have he probably made a quarter million off the whole season. I'm happy he made that quarter. And then he's like, the interviewer laughed at that comment. Uh, you know, he's like, you know, that's what he made. Why are you laughing like that? And make sure you put all these details in. I'll never let you interview me again if you take that out. Keep it. But look, uh, I know he made 250000 off the whole season. And that's good. Tell him I said congratulations. Let me first respond to that. You know what I think, though, just before you get into that? Um, I think that he's just mad because he cannot get in good connection with Meech, man. And he hates the fact that 50. Is that's possible. Him. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is true. And now he's just got to talk some shit. First off, shame on you media outlets for being stupid enough to fall for this and actually report that Rick Ross knows how much money BMF is making. Rick Ross has no fucking idea. He's not tied to stars. He's not tied to what 50 does. None of that shit. Him saying 250000 is straight up trolling. There's no facts behind that at all. I think just the kid himself, BMF, BM, BM, Big Meech's son is making 250000 off one episode, let alone the whole season. Like, let's not get it twisted. Stars, when 50 first went on Stars and created power, he was getting $10,000 an episode, which isn't shit. He said, I could get that in a club appearance. That's no problem. The whole season, I could have got that in a club appearance. Right. That wasn't the point, though. You have to start out low and build yourself up because 50 didn't have a name in the executive TV world. So you have to start off low. So that's why Rick Ross is talking shit about this and saying he only made 250,000 because of that comment of him making 10,000 per episode off the first power show, first season off stars. Now that stars is a huge powerhouse right behind HBO, which HBO pumps. I don't think you guys realize how much money they pump into their shows, like 10 times, at least five times to, I think it was 10 times more than stars pumps to their shows. Because HBO just has insane money. Game of Thrones, the budget for Game of Thrones was ridiculous. Nowhere near power. Isn't there a more recent article that came out that says 50 Cent made this much money? Yeah, I'm not, okay, yeah. I'm not getting... I'm, what? So, Game of Thrones, HBO, they're right behind HBO. And they pump probably 60 to 70% less money into their shows for promotion. 50 at this point got a $150 million deal from Stars. Where is Rick Ross? Rick Ross just hating with this comment. And he's just trying to belittle what 50's doing. The fact of the matter is, Big Meech's son said that Big Meech appreciates 50 Cent more than those people that he had around him when he was popping. He said he gave millions to people around him when he was popping. Yeah. And they're nowhere to be found. And 50, 50's reaching out, helping his son become an actor, a major actor. Right. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. His son's going to have a whole second life and breed something whole new. that he Legal can, way. And legal way. Clean. Yeah. Rich gang money. And that was 50's vision to bring his son into the acting. Because yeah. he could have, he he's like, even Big Meech was like, man, are you sure my son can act and be me? He's like, nah, man, we'll, we'll check it out. Yeah. We'll see. So, first off, shout out to 50 for creating opportunities for people that never had the opportunity. That's the he, first he did thing. a lot right now. A lot for a lot the of past people. past couple of years. For a lot of people. Shit. So, to Rick Ross, if he really likes Big Meech and really has respect for Big Meech, he would acknowledge that and not shit on the whole situation. But he is shitting exactly. on it. Congratulations for making 250 Bro, your album did 200, lucky 22,000 to 30,000 copies. You, you are in the negative with the label. Uh, One million percent you are. Right now you're in the red. The only way you're going to re- try to revamp this is to get 50. You're in the red with the label, 100%. I know that for a fact. Because I know how much, on average, what labels spend on budgets. If you're on a major label, you have to recoup the money. So right now what Rick Ross is going to do is tour all over America. Hope he recoups that money and pays back the label. This album was 100% double plastic flop. He knows that. Everyone knows that. You go from 80,000 copies, Port of Miami 2. Most. You're relying on your first album title, by the way. Imagine a 50 title, his next album, Give Richard I Trying To. You're, you're relying on an old album title to sell you records. That's yeah. the first thing. Second, 
You went from 80,000 copies to 30 at best, by the way. It's projected to do 22 to 30,000. So at best, you're going to do 30,000 copies. And then you have these backhanded compliments of talking about, oh, check the scoreboard. I'm killing it, blah, blah, blah. That's the yeah. first thing is this. She has no idea about the money being made, and you have to build yourself up. Any business person knows that. So to be shitting on that is just, you know, Rick Ross. This. Continuing on in this article, uh, the interviewer says, I'll thumb, through, I'll, I'll thumb through your IG stories. Talking about 50 reminded me of this because you'll just be like in your crib drinking Bel Air and blasting Lloyd Banks, who is obviously associated with someone you have a very public beef with. And you're nodding along to some classic unit or classic 50 and then yelling, Banks, you need some money. It's very dry and hilarious. And he said, come on, man, be honest. You know it's rough out there. Sometimes you just got to be honest. Tell Lloyd that I'll tell him, come to the promised land, and I'll have a conversation <laughs> with him. And I'll have no problem with Lloyd Banks. This guy, man. This is, like, Banks has completely destroyed Rick Ross. Like, lyrically, if you look at the track, Officer Down, the guy just got I hope ben, I, I hope just Banks he sees this, hears this. He's ignored this, it. He actually unfollowed me on Twitter because of me posting yeah, about this. Yeah, and he just gets back in the studio and just does some fucking... I'm glad they're not responding. No, I'm glad. I don't want nobody to respond. Rick yeah, Ross should, is yeah. irrelevant right now. Just yeah. let me get that clear. Facts. He's 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 trying to grip at anything. He's I think like, only Drake, me. like you said, man, has only been one that's been Drake's been saving Drake's there. been saving a lot of people's careers. Let's yeah, be honest. Man, that's a future. Have, you think future would have had life is good and been blown up yeah. a diamond record without Drake, Drake? Is saving Rick Ross one billion percent right now? He's, if he did not have those records. I, I don't I don't see nothing. The like, Grammys. He got nominated gold, whatever gold that record is, gold roses with Drake. Yeah, gold roses. The only reason he got nominated because Drake's on it. That's yeah. it. Nobody would give a fuck about that record. Yeah. Let's be honest. Facts. Continuing this interview, wow. he said, well, you respected the music when you're rapping along. You were listening to Hate or Love. Remember that clip where he's talking about mm-hmm. he's listening yeah, to Yeah, I remember. It. He's, like, what, what do, he's like, what did I say on that clip? He said, well, you specifically dialed in on the line about his mother. He said, because his mom, he said she was a bull dagger, right? That's what you liked. That was a dope how you said it. Basically, his mom was kissing other women, and she was a uh, uh, lesbian. Yeah. But he admitted to that. He thought his mom, you know, my mom kissing a girl, whatever. So he's making fun of that line. Both. Um, he said, what'd you act, do a comedy? He's like, they're not enough money in acting. That's what I was just saying. Your man made 250000 for a season doing that. That little season, Stars TV shit. What channel is it really? Look at this guy, dude. He said he's actually on Stars. He's like, that's on Stars? I really was joking. He should have just went to Revolt. Just go to Revolt next time. Tell Curtis I said go to Revolt. The way Rick Ross responds is just obviously he's just jealous of. Yeah, it's yeah. Simple as that, man. I can just that's 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 the energy I'm getting. He's mad that Maybach hey. Music Group never got to be what Juna ever was. By the yeah. way, Maybach Music Group is nowhere near the level what Juna does. Um, Rick Ross, here's the thing: Rick Ross will never have a Give It to Die trying ever in his career, and he knows that. There's no Rick Ross album that hits that if you go on the classic list. What do you think of Chronic? You think of Lil Wayne, the Carter Three, or Carter Two. You think of Kanye West, Graduation, My Beautiful Dark Twist Fantasy. You think of Jay Z, Blueprint, or whatever, Reasonable mm-hmm. Doubt. You think of Fifty Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying. You think Nas, Illmatic. Do you think Rick Ross? Does that come to your mind at all? Like, hey, Rick Ross, like, be one hundred percent honest. Yeah, to me, what? I'm just playing, dog. Well, I was gonna say, yeah, what album? There's nothing. <laughs> That's the thing. That's what digs into him. Hustle and hustle. Because what he said too. This is a while ago on Breakfast Club. He said, I'd rather release ten albums and go. Platinum on 10 albums and do 10 million copies like that, then release only one album and do 10 million. First off, 50's done 10 million twice. That's the first thing. Second, yeah. you don't even go platinum on your albums. You go gold. Your first yeah. album was the only one that went platinum. Everything else went gold. So what is he talking about? This yeah. is my problem. Is if he was here doing the interview, I'd be like, listen, this doesn't make any sense what you're saying in a respectful way, obviously. But he can put hands on I me. Mean, I don't care. Camera's on. I'll, get, I'll sue the shit out of him. I'm 100% going to sue. Gross. But my point is, is, why talk like that? And why don't people check him? Why didn't Charlemagne say, yo, that doesn't make any sense. Like, that's the problem with this is people, he says these things and people don't check them. They're too scared or they're too, oh, I don't want to say anything because he might get mad. Like, just be honest. Be like, nah, man, 50 made more than 250,000 on the show. I'm, he just signed a $150 million deal. What are you talking about? I would have been like, what is that? That doesn't make any sense. But it's simple, man. He just yeah. he hates the fact that, be, you know, his son is fucking with him. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just jealous. You know, he hates the fact that Big Meech he, 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 approved 50 to do the only show that's available. Yeah. And he didn't reach out to him when he had BMF that record and say, do a show. No, that's why. Because Rick Ross is a fan of Big Meech, man. Yeah. But, yeah. Rick Ain't Ross boss is, enough for it. Rick Ross is just, he's so delusional. It's, um, and the fact that people even thought 
that Rick Ross was on the same level of 50 when they're beefing. Get the I was mind blown at that. I I get it. He got hot after the 50. Yeah, he was he was just hot. He got a little bit hot, and then BMF that record was hot too. But this motherfucker wasn't worldwide. I think that's that's probably his one of his best records. Yeah, but this was this motherfucker worldwide. Was everybody in the world bumping this guy? Yeah, man. I was overseas. I was bumping him. Let's not like Like, who who did? I was like, (laughs) boss. Anyways, this is another delusional thing of Rick Ross. He said he wants to do a Jay Z versus battle. He said that's a possibility. Get the fuck. You're nowhere near Jay Z, bro. Like nowhere near. I mean, near. He, he probably just thinks that's a good. I mean, he has an opinion. Shit. I mean, let him. But yeah, yeah. Jay Z would wash him. And I'm not even the biggest. You guys know me. I've mentioned Jay Z how I think he's overrated. He would wash Rick Ross. But not even be close. Whoa, whoa. Man. Yes. Hold on. Man. Yeah, he would. I'm blowing money fast in this <laughs> hustling, hustling. I'm on one. <laughs> what is that? Come on, man. <laughs> Dude, you know how much Jay Z records there is? Just off Kanye alone. It's a hard record. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's okay. All right, you won. Just watch the throne. Watch the whole fucking <laughs> Jay Z Rick Ross. <laughs> and I don't oh. even like like watch the throne. To me, I don't even consider that. But the, the, the product of that alone would wash anything. I else. think Rick Ross would. You're just trolling. I know you. I'm are. not trolling. <laughs> I think man, guys. That, the, okay, we'll we'll see it when it happens. If I hope that, it happens, that won't happen. And you're gonna see who, whose energy is more. Dun, 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 dun. Nah, bro. All right, yeah. Jay Z won. All right. Going back to more beefs, Freddie Gibbs uh, allegedly got assaulted by Jim Jones. So I don't know what the beef is, but behind them, because this is interesting. Um, let's go over our call and see. Yeah. Uh, Freddie Gibbs and his crew were reportedly dining at Prime 112, 111, whatever, 112, yeah, in Miami on Tuesday night, December 14th, when they ran into Jim Jones's entourage. According to Vlad TV, a fight broke out after the respective groups exchanged some choice of words. Unsurprisingly, uh, Gibbs' rival academics is enjoying every minute of it, especially considering Vlad TV uh, title in its original Instagram post. So, of course, academics hates Freddie Gibbs. They've always been back and forth. Um, according to Sosa's uh, fight between Jim Jones' crew broke out with Freddie Gibbs' crew at a swanky restaurant, Prime to 11 in Miami. Apparently, the two sides bumped one another while uh, at the establishment and a fight ensued afterwards or exchange. Sources also detailed that Freddie Gibbs and his side took the worst of the exchange. Um, I don't... I usually um, don't believe these type of stories until I see video footage because we're in 2021, 2022 almost. Mm. Usually there's a recording. Somebody records something. Yeah, somebody yeah, has to post something. So like, I don't know if this is this. real, but we'll keep our eye on this. I definitely don't believe it. Um, I agree with you on that. Um, Freddie Gibbs, though, responded to and he posts a happy video after Jim Jones' application. Um, okay. Freddie Gibbs and Jim Jones allegedly got the five of the Grammy Award nominated uh, Instagram. He posted an Instagram video of himself online, strolling along in a fresh white tee with a giant grin on his face. Come on, baby, it's me, he said. The rabbit. But that's where the clip ends. Par for course. Uh, the Shade Room's comment section explosion with many people assuming he lost the purport, the uh, perpetuated fight. Uh, one person wrote, if you got to do this, that means you lost. That's not true. But Cap. Uh, the old jokes don't stop either. Even though Gibbs is just 39 and Jim Jones is 45, he said... They're too old to be out here fighting like the 90s anyway. Uh, yeah. Why do people in hip-hop always shit on older generation artists? Like, let them live, bro. They're le- legends. Like, when We Fly High was coming out, like, you were probably in diapers. All these people are, like, 18 years old. Why you got to shit on them? I mean, why are they shitting on older people? You're going to get old eventually one day, too. So that's why I, I never understood when Machine Gun Kelly was dissing Eminem about being old. Your fucking beard is weird. Yeah. That, okay, I understand, because his beard does look weird. <laughs> It does. It looks a little off. I swear. What? No, I swear it does. Fucking beard is weird. But to say why, that he's... Why do people got to care about other people's beards? I don't know. Just a this thing. But anyways... You know, like, he can't be beautiful in every single way. I know. Okay. I'm I know. Saying. I'm just saying, like, MGK. And that's that's the point of this. Yeah, you disappearances. You look skinny and tall. So yeah. So, yeah. He said, what's in that fucking fruit bowl, <laughs> Kelly? Yeah. I took a shit in him. Shit. <laughs> Eminem said no, that. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> MGK... I mean, I was literally said, what's in that fucking bowl, they, they Kelly? They went in at each other, man. It was it was funny, and it was good. But my point is, he was dissing yeah. when he's old. Like, eventually, yeah. you're going to get old. So what's yeah. the point of that? That's it's my okay. Point. You know. Haley will come back. Nah, nah. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, yeah, I don't know why people diss old OGs in hip-hop. Like, yeah. leave him alone. Leave let him, him get old. Please. Uh, uh, beard is Fugiano. Weird. Baby mama this ain't is, shit. Yeah, he was starting to blow up. Um, he was an artist on Gucci's label. Uh, he's indicted on federal gun charges in South Carolina. Uh, again, so he's getting into worse trouble. He's been indicted on federal gun charges following an incident in South Carolina on July 5th, 2020, according to the Greenville Online. The oh, Georgia okay. rapper, real name Kwame Brown, is facing two counts of illegal possession of a firearm by a felon following a performance at Greenville County's Lavish Lounge when a mass shooting took place. 
A Glock 40 caliber pistol and ammunition were found in Fujiano's possession, but authorities say he didn't fire any weapons. So, Sani appeared in U- yeah, Gucci Mane Sani appeared uh, in U.S. District Court on Friday with documents unsealed on Monday when he was arrested and arraigned. So, we'll keep our eye on this. Um, this is bad luck for Gucci. I, I, I put money, he hates this shit. Yeah, definitely. You know? Um, crazy news about Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez. So, Honestly, I don't know. Based off these things, it's looking like Tory Lanez didn't do anything, but it's looking like he did do something. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm really curious because if Tory Lanez didn't do anything, you know what people deserve uh, to apologize to him because Twitter was just destroying him. Mm-hmm. If if Tory Lanez comes out of this as not doing anything, Twitter deserves like they got to d- apologize to the motherfucker so much because they were dragging the shit out of him when this happened. So we'll see. Wow. But, um, let's see over the article. Uh, Tory Lanez attended a preliminary hearing in his felony assault case at the Los Angeles courthouse on Tuesday, December 14th, where a Los Angeles Police Department detective claimed he told Megan Thee Stallion to dance, bitch, for allegedly shooting her in the feet. God damn. But a new witness testimony, Megan Thee Stallion's account of what actually had happened has been called in question. According to TMZ, a detective testified in court, an independent witness claimed Megan and her friend, Kelsey got into a verbal argument moments before the gun went off. The witness also claimed the gun's muzzle flash went off closer to Kelsey than Lane's. But Megan Thee Stallion is appalled by TMZ's initial coverage and took to Twitter to slam the outlet for seemingly negating the fact that she was actually shot with a gun. She ended up tweeting saying, Don't blog slash journalists have to have accurate, credible sources before going with a story? Or is it just like a new, I got paid to post this or I heard out from my homegirl t- type policy these days. I agree with that. People need to stop just posting random shit and actually get their sources correct. Uh, like, I've been shot, and the focus of some of these things, headlines, are dismissing that I was attacked with a weapon while I was unarmed and trying to paint it as a cat fight between my friends. Why do I have to relive this with everyone on the internet every day and watch y'all gaslight me? I agree with that. We need to acknowledge that her foot was actually shot. There's photos, like, Y'all got to stop playing this game of she never was shot. Tory Lanez ended up going on Twitter, too. Let me find his tweet because I didn't post it on here. And he's basically going to say, like, yo, y'all deserve, y'all got to give me a When you were saying Twitter, are you talking about, like, just people in general on Twitter? Yeah. Talking shit? Okay. Let me see. With a popcorn emoji because he dropped his album, I think, or his new. I don't know if I mentioned it. He said, nah, I need someone to report on what was really said in court today. 45 minutes, my lawyer stayed in contradictory uh, evidence that proves my innocence. Should never come back as one false story forced to the media. So there's reports saying that her friend was the one that let off the shot to Megan because apparently Tory Lanez had a relationship with Megan Thee Stallion's friend too. Okay. So they got mad, argued, her friend pulled out the gun apparently, shot her in the foot, and Tory Lanez had nothing to do so with it. So he never did. The witness is saying the muzzle, so the flash from the gun came more f- closer to her friend, so that means she had the gun and popped it off. So, I don't know. We're going to see what the fuck happens. This Damn. Is, I'm just this saying, totally Twitter, tweet. you better apologize for dragging Tory Lanez if this is true. It was a friend that shot her. Mm-hmm. I, I I never said Tory Lanez did it. I, I was like, well, let's, let's see what the facts come out. Now that the facts are finally coming out, we'll see. We'll keep our eye on this. Yeah, man. Crazy story. Um, things are changing. Yeah. Now, finally, your end list. Ooh. You want to start? Because I've been talking like baby crazy. Mama, so. Baby mama ain't shit. All right, which list are we starting first? Um, let's albums. do let's do top five albums. Top five and albums. Give, it, give me some reasons. Are we starting with five, four? Let's do five, four, three, two, one. Um. All right. So for my albums, I had to. I'm gonna wait, start wait, wait, before. Five. Sorry, sorry, before. This is our personal opinion. Not, yeah, this is this just, is just my our personal opinion, opinion. You know, uh, I had to put Drake in number five. Of course. Yeah, I have to put Drake because I always listen to him. All right. The album's decent. He's got some features that I like. Does it make it clear? Uh, certified Lover Boy. Certi- yes, sorry. Certified Lover Boy. That's what I meant. So I put Certified Love Slut. I don't know why. Um, I was joking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had to mess with him a little bit. Um, right. Number four, I had to put IDK. And that's see you for yourself. I I man, I feel bad. Hey, I haven't listened to the guy's album. Yeah, I feel that's so bad. F- look, like I never listened to this guy, but when I listened to album, I, I started to like him and just listen. So for him to do that for me with that album, 
And I know he's got way other albums before, um, but to listen to the album and for me to like it and to actually connect with it and stuff like that, I, I liked it, man. So I had to put him in number four. And I, there's a lot of good albums, man. I, I have like a 35 list albums that I put together. And then out of that 35, I had to like pick. That's how crazy I got into this shit. Because um, there was like, there's so many good albums. No, you can do honorable mentions after your list. Yeah. Right? So, anyways, um, I put number three. Guess who? Key Glock and Young Dolph. Dumb and Dumber. Two. Two. That album. Mixtape or album. Yeah, I'm one of those. Oh, it's out? Oh, it's a mixtape? Mix yeah. Oh, shit. I thought that was the album. Doesn't matter. It's still good. Anyways, yeah. whatever. A lot of these man. are like half mixtape. I really like the album. These two. Like like we said before, that chemistry is just, it's crazy, man. It's beautiful. It's They connect real good. They make good records. Um, there's a lot of songs that I can bump to on that album. Yeah. A I'm lot. I'm going to miss them, too. Yeah, and the good. beats are on fire. Yeah. Yeah, so I really like that album. Uh, and then, of course, I had to do number two, Lil Durk and Baby, Voice of the Heroes. Okay. Yeah. That's number just, two? Number two. All right. And number one, everybody's going to be like, what the fuck? All right. I had to put Migos, Culture 3. That album dropped in the summer. I got my, th this is just a personal reason. Yeah. I, mean, I liked yeah. it too. Um, it was during the summer. Uh, there is like. Uh, Straightening. Yeah. There's just a lot of records that I just, I loved on that album. Um, and uh, it was during the summer. Plus I ended up getting a new car during the summer. Um, that always does it. Yeah, and it, it just, I, I just have a c connection. Every time I listen to the album, it brings me back to that moment. That does in it. Yeah. Time. I like it's just one of those albums. Yeah. So I, when I got some albums like that, yep. I, I love them, and I just gotta. I, I still fair. listen to it. Here, That's fair. You know, and you know, it, uh, what I was gonna say. Um, yeah, it's just overall, it's a good album, man. I, I think they so, really did a good job with. It. Okay, so go over so, the list again. So number one, Migos, Culture Three. Uh, number two, Lil Durk and Lil Bay, Voice and Heroes. Uh, number three, Key Glock, Young Dolph, Dumb and Dumber 2. Number four, IDK, C, For Yourself. And number five, Dri Drizzy, Certified Lover. Okay, you have any honorable mentions? Uh, there's a lot, man. Uh, Just I mean, I, like I, I, could, I could, I could, I could, uh, J. Cole. Off season. Yeah, okay. I, I was, I was checking out, there's. Man, there was a lot of good albums. It was so hard to make this list. Um, shit, there's J. Cole, uh, the uh, uh, young uh, G. Herbo, twenty five. All right, I don't really. Yeah, I there was a lot of songs that I like on that album. Uh, Hall of Fame, Polo G. Um, you got Donda, which I'm not a fan of it, but you got to give him respect for the album. Uh, All right, that's good enough. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's do my list. Uh, top five. To be honest with you, I just went off what I listened to the most. I really didn't. Um, yeah, and I had to go that route too. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, this is always always our, always our opinion. Um, this mm -hmm. has nothing to do with the numbers and sales and everything. Correct. Uh, number five for me is Polo G Hall of Fame. Uh, he finally got a number one record of the rap star. I felt like it was a breakout year. The album is very cohesive. Even the deluxe version, I really enjoy. Yeah. Uh, the record with Moneybag Yo is right now one of my favorites, even though it's super short. That's one thing I have a problem with Polo G about is his records sometimes are too short. Yeah, not to cut you off, but I was going to actually put him over Drake, but I just put Drake. Cause yeah, Hall of yeah. Fame is amazing. Even the deluxe version, really enjoyed it. I remember streaming on Twitch, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Been bumping the shit out of it. So shout out to him, Polo G, number five, Hall of Fame. Number four, Lil Baby and Lil Dirk, the voice of the heroes. Um, the reason why... I've been bumping the shit out of it. That's another thing. But <laughs> but it's very hard to create a good collab album. You have to give props to that. Yeah. That's the thing. It's, it's like true. people don't understand how hard it is. You have to have very good chemistry. That's why Young Dolph and Kegelock is very important too. Them, you know, yeah. It's like peanut butter and jelly. It's very hard to create a dope album. And they executed perfectly on this album, at least in my opinion. Number three, and this is kind of biased, but you kind of already know, Lloyd Banks, The Course of the Inevitable. Um, I just like the fact that Banks was really open about his personal life a little bit more on this album. We got we got kind of a hint of his relationship of what's going on with G Unit and you know the Stranger Things record is a lot about people have been pointing to, towards Fifty even though it's not confirmed. I'm not saying that it is. Um, 
I just enjoyed the fact that Banks finally got out. Yeah. And the title is just beautiful. The artwork. Right. The, the track listing, uh, the, the, the transition of songs to the production, though, I wish it was a little bit more modern, but it happens. That's my only. Like, yeah, that, I wish the same. Yeah. yeah. But number three, Lloyd Banks, of course, in Deadpool. Nice. Number two, J. Cole, the off season. Uh, I don't know why, man. I just really like J. Cole's voice. I like his flow. I like his delivery. Every time he drops, I enjoy it. Um, and to be honest with you, this album did fall off to me in terms of listening for a while, like two, three months probably went by where I didn't listen to it. And then I went back and revisited. I was like, damn, it's such a good album. Um, and I appreciate it even more. So mm-hmm. J. Cole, the off season is number two. And then number one, this is just a new guy that I discovered earlier this year that I just been bumping the shit out of. Everything has been dropping. It's just been on point to me. Young and Ace, Life of Betrayal, two times. I don't know why, man. Uh, back like I never left. Ah, boys, who I smoke. All these records, bro. Just, I just love them, man. Like the whole album, I enjoyed. Um, he definitely. I hope he really has a breakout year, but he's wanting to quit music at this point because he doesn't like the tension he's getting from it. So hopefully, you know, he doesn't do that because he has got new records right now called Walk Away, where he just doesn't want to do it anymore. But uh, Young and Ace. If you guys haven't heard the album, go ahead and check it out. Um, Back Like I Never Left is probably one of my favorite tracks that dropped this year. Ah, boys, and who I smoke, baby, who I... Yeah. That was a I huge you, moment in hip-hop. You were bumping that a lot. Earlier this year, that was a huge moment in hip-hop. That was like... Imagine sampling a fucking innocent white girl song and turning to the most savage shit and getting it approved as a sample. That's rare. That doesn't happen in hip-hop often. So, shout-out to Young and Ace. Um... For honorable mentions for me, it was Tyler, the creator, Call Me If You Get Lost. I really enjoyed the different approach he took to this album. The, the Another thing, too, is rollouts for albums. A lot of rollouts for these albums were amazing. Like Donda had an insane rollout. Kanye West, that's an honorable mention for me. Mm-hmm. That album, dude fucking running out of the whole Mercedes Stadium, was fucking yeah. walking around with that's a mask saying, on. Like, it was... Man, no, it just was... the rollouts for these albums. Like Drake, Certified Lover Boy, he had those billboards that just popped up that announced features. Hey, yep, yep. this person, like, that's a dope yeah. rollout. I remember um, seeing that a lot of places. Yeah, Baby King, Blue Melodic. I like the fact that he came out and blew up, like, as, you know, because he was out there, but, like, he, Kendrick really took him under his wing and just sky pulled him. The album, the the Family Ties track, and the whole album, Blue Melodic, mm-hmm. was huge. Nas, King's Disease, too. I enjoyed the storytelling on the album. The yeah. fact that he went back in history, talked about the Tupac beef, and a lot of things that we got, like, bits of hip, uh, hip-hop history was dope. So those are my honorable mentions. But that's my list. Number five, Pology Hall of Fame. Number four, Lil Baby, Lil Dirk, The Voice of the Heroes. Number three, Lloyd Banks, The Course of the Inevitable. Number two, J. Cole, The Offseason. And number one, uh, Young and Ace, Life of Betrayal, two times. Yeah, it was it was hard to make it that list. It is. Yeah, because yeah, there was, like you said, Nas. You want to go to songs? J. Cole. Um, yeah, let's do songs. Oh, Thanks man, this that. took me a minute, too. Yeah, man. I was going to do top oh, verses shit. of the year, too. I really wanted to do that, but I... Top like, verses? Yeah, like verse. Oh, like, that would have been like, interesting. Not the verses, like battling, but like actual verse. Yeah, like verse in a song. Yeah. yeah. Some yeah. Um, and this is just another personal opinion too, man. Um so I had uh G Herbo, Break Yourself. Interesting. Yeah, number five. I haven't heard that record. But. Yeah, I like that song. Okay. Yeah, it just um anyways, so number four I had Nardo Wick, Who Wanna Smoke with Me. I don't yeah. know if that's out of top. I, I they it's a great ki- record. It's a great record. I like. I listen to it. Yeah. I repeat it. Uh, everybody killed it. My opinion. Yeah, you know. I think G Herbo is probably the weakest one on there. Yeah, yeah. If you have to put in that order, um, I had number three, Roddy Rich, late at night. I just like the song. Yeah, I was. Yeah, a fan of that record. I, I was a fan of that record. Um, Trade of Truth, featuring Quavo. Knots. I, I don't remember love that record. That record. I don't remember that record at all. Yeah. I, hey, man, check it out. I, got, yeah, I, yeah. I don't remember hearing that at all. Yeah, dude, you got that song. Okay. Goes hard. All right. Yeah. And then uh, I had Migos, number one, Straighten. Straighten was hard. Right? Yeah, because. I just. Shit. You know why I like that track? Because of Trey Young, Atlanta Hawks. Yeah. Every time he would go and in the playoffs. And then they would play it in the NBA a lot so yeah. much, too, man. Yeah. That was um, cool. And then I had a lot of friends, too, that just. They fuck with that record a lot, and they just I would hear it everywhere. Straighten it, okay. Straighten it. Go over that list again one more time. Um, so basically, yeah. And then let me see. Um, where the hell is that list? At? Oh, okay. So G Herbo, break yourself. Um, number five. By the way, that B is fucking insane. Uh, Nardo Wick, who wants smoke with me? Roddy Rich, late at night, traded truth featuring Quavo Knots, 
number two. Uh, Migos, number one, straightener. Oh, interesting. All right. Yeah. My top five uh, songs, number five, J. Cole Pride is the Devil. I know it's a very generic answer, <laughs> but I really, I just, I was, the reason why I put that record on there, it was really interesting to hear J. Cole and Lil Baby on one track and how Lil Baby can hold his own on any type of record. Conscious, trap, upbeat, whatever the hell, anything. Lil Baby can adapt. That just shows the diversity in Lil Baby. And he's really, really talented as an artist. And it was a surprise feature. We had no idea Lil Baby was going to be on the track. So it kind of just made that record more special to me. And I just enjoyed the fuck out of that track. I still bump it today. So that's number five. J. Cole Pride is the Devil featuring Lil Baby. I'm surprised you didn't have this next track on here. Uh, I must have Fredo Bang that. Top Remix. Yeah. I can sound my way. This this list was the one quick mess. Yeah, that so top. I, I would change this list. I, that top record yeah. is, you know, that record yeah. is. Um, so far, these two songs you have is perfect. Yeah, number four, <laughs> that record is just, I yeah. bumped the shit out of that. I can't sound my way. Da, 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 da. Yeah. yeah, that record is just. Um, number three, Baby King Family Ties. Jumping that, jumping that shit. Little oh, Kendrick, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to we put, just yeah, we just, yeah. that record is just perfection. Damn, nice. And it was a nice, like, coming out for Kendrick. He's been, mm-hmm. He hasn't really done much in a while. The execution music video is dope. Um, That's a good list. Yeah. Very, very good track. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't have this either. But Oh, my God. Number two, Kevin I've... Gates, Puerto Rico Love. I really That was 2021? That. Yeah, that dropped earlier this year. You can check it. Puerto Rico Love, yeah. Yeah. Damn. That record is just Little bitty beach, I just enjoyed I to, the man, shit out of that track. Ass. That was another record yeah. that I was like, damn. And then once again, Young and Ace number one, Op Boys. I really enjoy that track too. That I was bumping all when I was in Florida, my trip to Florida, the summer or whatever. That's the only track I was bumping. Wait, what, what was that? Sorry. Young and Ace Op Boys. You never heard that record? I gotta play it. Just, just let me see if a copyright. Hopefully copyright doesn't do I'm it. Trying to think, because I know I probably heard it in your car. Yeah, you probably I'm, I'm one yeah, million. It's percent. okay, man. Don't I don't want to I gotta play a little bit of it, man. I have to just for the culture. I have to put M M&M. and M. This guy. Twin M&M. babies, <laughs> motherfucker. It's okay, go with him, hey. I can't let you nigga get no stain on me. Oh yeah, oh, man. Ah, that's right. Oh my god. Yeah, that's, that's not, yeah anyways. Nah, I changed that shit. I'm, 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 I'm nah, really, I just late at night. I'm putting that. <laughs> Uh, number three. Honorable mention for me was Lloyd Banks, Stranger Things, Drake, Knife Talk, Kanye West, Jail. Uh, there's a lot of different records I enjoyed. Man. A lot oh, of great that. music. Like yeah, I didn't said. do that shit. Yeah, I didn't whatever. Think about that. Um, top, top five, five artists. artists. Damn. To me, man, I'm just gonna go with. I'm gonna, start, I'm gonna go with stop. Start at number one. Okay. I think the 2021 is you gotta give it to Lil Durk. I did the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh I just, wow, that's great. I bumped yeah. the shit out of Durk this year Look, too. So I, I, a couple months ago, I was disagreeing with it, but then. Yeah, I had to just put him, dude. This and guy, that is, verse he's his put on follow, his smoke. followers on Instagram went up like crazy. Yep. Uh, his he's been featured in so many songs, unbelievable. Hot, and he's killing it. Most he's on, hot 100 entries this year as an artist. Yeah, and he got that. So I was like, dude, you got to give it to him. Have to number two. You go this time. You want me to? <laughs> yeah, let's okay. go back and forth. <laughs> I got J Cole at number two. Damn, I had a little baby. Nah, Lil Baby, he only did that collab album. After that, he didn't do much Man, else. But that's the thing. The reason why I give it to J. Cole, he dropped though. a documentary with the album. But it's just one out. thing the whole year, like pretty what much. One thing the whole year. He dropped, what? Well, he dropped one album. Yeah. Okay. And that's an album. What the fuck? So it makes you hot for the whole year? Yeah, that's it's the best selling, one of the best selling albums. And it's, I replay the fuck out of it. And he dropped a documentary with the album. And yeah. he's torn off the album. Okay, but Baby's. What are you doing? Drop an album. No, he just dropped the, the collab album with Dirk. Okay. Right. He's being featured left and right. No, he's not anymore. Yeah, he is, man. No, he stopped. Okay. He said, I stopped doing features. He's not featured. Okay, anymore. so whatever. He's here and there. But I don't know. I keep hearing him everywhere. So to he's me. Just, uh, yeah, I guess. Late at night. Keep me in the morning. But we're not, we're not going off who's but, hot. Yeah, who yeah, we yeah. enjoy. Uh, That's what I'm saying. I'm just going. No, off I'm off. going with top. I'm, the way you're I saying the top list, five artists is who's hot is what you're going I went with who's the hottest in 2021. Who do I listen to? 2001 kind of and then i went on this I, list i went to like what people were kind of like oh man little baby's the hottest oh little, i didn't do that i just yeah, went that's what that's I like. what i kind of went with yeah a little bit but i mean and then for number three what number three i put drake man. hell no i put kanye west in number three so we're actually polar opposites of that i don't bro kanye became a billionaire this year i think it was this year well, kanye the rollout on his album was the most Crazy! Oh, he's the shit. hottest 2021 artist. Come on, man! I say he's number three first off, and yeah, it's I mean, my yeah. opinion on how you yeah. know. I'm not going about what's hot, yeah. but he is. The dude set himself on fire to fucking promote his album. Damn, yeah, he's crazy. What did Drake do? He fucking put up some billboards, and that's it. 
I'm just saying the right. role Kanye really when he when he releases something, he engulfs himself into shit. The whole fucking experience is his vision. Like even when Kanye and Drake went out, that was all Kanye shit. The yeah. whole thing. So you gotta give the effort Kanye puts into his rollouts for albums is something that you don't get from a lot of artists. Really rarely any. With every album he's had some sort of rollout that was crazy. And this one was the craziest, bro. We're watching this guy, a 24-hour live stream on Apple Music. This guy's in his room, fucking sleeping yeah, yeah. in a bed and just walking around know, getting haircuts. Yeah, it was just crazy. He's walking around in a stadium, a soccer stadium <laughs> with a mask on. Yeah. Like, what the fuck, dude? This, is, this guy was spending a million dollars a day in Mercedes Stadium. And Drake made an artist sing. Come on, man. What are you talking about? Drake made an artist sing? What yeah. are you talking about? Who? He made that artist sing. I don't know. What can, can Kanye West make somebody sing? Or does have anything to do with anything? I'm just saying. But I'm right, just saying, the right, ro- Drake didn't have hey, much hey, hey, besides hey. the certified lover boy and going back and forth with Kanye. That's really about it. Well, man, he was being featured like where? S- uh, uh, slime Season, whatever. He had a good song there. He had, come on, man. He bought a mansion. Another Did Drake one. become a billionaire? No. No. But the, what does it matter? Just money? If you made money, then you're. That's what I'm saying. He had such. Hey, he hey, was hey. so big. All right. All right, let's get it. Number four, you. Young and Ace for me. I had a popology. I popology at number five. For That's real? I put Key Glock. So nah. Right you I, 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 you weren't even bumping Key Glock like that. No, Let's man, be honest. I, I, I just couldn't think of a number five, man. Really? I, I, yeah, that, that, that fifth one, Kanye I, West. I just put. I yeah, I was about to think, but I don't like the guy. <clears throat> nah, you can't. You gotta. You can't. Yeah. My man, I put what about Baby Keem? You didn't put Baby Keem on there? Man, I'm about to put IDK at number five. IDK, yeah. Baby Keem. There's been a lot of... I'm put IDK. But yeah, my list was five, Polo G, four, Young and Ace, sure. three, Kanye West, two, J. Cole, number one, Lil Durk. Yeah, I had number one, Lil Durk. You going the other way around? Oh, okay, number five, IDK, number four, Polo G, number three, Drake, number two, Lil Baby, number one, Lil Durk. Interesting. So that's yeah, our list. I want to read some fan list quick. Oh, they? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to read some fans. So shout out to our Discord. Um... Show love underscore 1995. Shout out to you uh, for hopping on the Discord and responding to the song of the year, album of the year, artist of the year. Uh, his list, which was very interesting, he said, my top five songs, and he didn't put these in order. I don't know if he had these in order because he didn't put numbers by them. He just put dashes. But EMPD2 by Nas featuring Nas, I mean featuring Nas, featuring Eminem and EPMD, which was a huge record on Nas, King's Disease 2. Mm-hmm. That record was big. Uh, Death Row East by Nas. So a lot of these are Nas off King's Disease 2, which that album is amazing. Don't yeah, get me wrong. No. It's a great-ass album. I really enjoyed the history, like I said, on that album. That's an honorable mention for me. Uh, Brunch on Sunday by Nas featuring, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. I always mess it up. B-L-S-X-T. I don't know if it's Blasted or Blast. I don't know. Um, Tell the Vision, which I really, I forgot all about oh, that record. Oh, I forgot oh, all about that. That's a good yeah. ass. Damn it, man. I should have saw this Holy before shit. I even. Holy shit. Yeah, Damn, Tell the like- Vision and Pop Smoke. Yeah, we made it. Anyways, That's that features Kanye West Push T. That whole album is garbage, but that song is fire. Yeah. And then Family Ties by Baby Kim and Kendrick Lamar. That's what I had too. Yeah. So that record's fire. Shout oh, out to him. That's a good list, man. Yeah. And then we're going to look at his top five album list. This is no order for him. You got The Voice of the Heroes. Nice. So which we, we, do. we all did. Yeah. The Off Season. I did too. You, Jen, I don't think you did. <laughs> uh, King's Disease 2. Beast. Um, the Course of the Inevitable was the Lloyd Banks. So he's he's on these more on my side. Yeah. Shout out to no, him. that album. And we forgot all yeah. about this. This guy mentioned a gangsta's pain, money bag yo. We forgot all. No, about no, it. I have it here, but I just it's I honorable just, mention. Is yeah. what you have it as. He yeah. actually has it on the list. Yeah, man. A gangsta's yeah, yeah. That's, you got to give back. You got to yeah. give props to um to money bag yo. Um, yeah. artist of the year he had. He put J Cole as the number one. Nice. And he said the other four, Lil Durk. Little baby, Polo G, and Money Bag Yo. That's essentially the same type of list. We, we kind of yeah, agree. I have three artists, same as him. Yeah, I had Lil, I had Lil Dirk, Polo G. I had Polo G, Lil Baby, Lil Dirk. Yeah, yeah. We we each had like three of yeah, just different ones. Yeah, nice. That's cool. So shout out to yeah. Show Love underscore nineteen ninety five for that list. Yeah, man. that was his list Your on beast. there. Um, and I want to get some on YouTube comments here quick. Um, Eric Espinoza, for his albums, he had the Off Season, Punk, which is a Young Thug, mm. Donda, and okay. Certified Lover Boy. Okay. That's pretty typical. A lot of these lists are like we kind of expect to. The, Come on, man. I uh, like Daniel. Guy. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Shout out to you, but that's a long last name. Top five, 25 songs. You did top 25. I no ain't going way. off all this. Whoa, he gangsta. In his top five, four of them are Doja Cat. 
Shout out to Doja Cat because he. Whoa, Doja. Yeah, I, he, hey, he I was need just, to know. Yeah. He's got You Right with The Weeknd. Got Kiss Me More with SZA and Woman. Four. And then he has Baby Keem Family Ties. Shout out to Baby Keem. Um, family yeah. Ties. Is, and then he said my list for uh, top 25 albums. He has Doja Cat, Planet Her, Baby Keem. Number two with the Melodic Blue. Number three, 24K Golden, El Dorado. I, yeah, I forgot all about 25K Golden. Damn. Isaiah Rashad, number four, The House is Burning. That's another honorable mention. And then number five, Polo G Hall of Fame. That's dope. Yeah. Good list. Um, Alonzo, he actually DM'd me, but he actually has a comment on here, too. Shout out to Alonzo. Um, Shout out to Alonzo. Yeah, he said top five albums, no order. He put J. Cole's The Off Season, Polo G's Hall of Fame. Gangst. Nas is King Disease 2. Gangst. I forgot all about this. Rod Wave, Soul Fly. Damn. Oh, I have it here. Yep. I listed my album, but I was like, oh, how did I forget this? Well, I mean, I didn't bump it that much, to be honest. Yeah, I that, that, that's it. the thing. I, I yeah. wasn't, I have it right here. But. but it is a really, really great album. And then Baby and Dirk's Voice of the Hero. Wait, what, what, which album did you say? Soulfly? Yeah. Rob yeah, Rob. I have it here. Yep. Yeah. He put top five songs off the grid featuring, um, which is Yay, Fabio, and Cardi. He put My Life, Cole, 21, and Murray. Uh, Brunch on Sundays, Nas, and I don't know how to pronounce the guy, BLXT, whatever. Uh, Never Fail, Murray and Benny the Butcher. That's a great record, too. More Time Pop Smoke. Interesting. Um, what is that noise outside? Yeah. Oh, motorcycle. Damn, that oh, shit loud as like, Yeah, I was like, what the hell just happened? And then he put for his artist, he put 21 Savage, Baby Keem, Lil Dirk, J. Cole, and Lil Nas X. Lil Nas X, by the way, had a huge year. That's another thing we have now. Yeah. I don't know about 21 Savage. That was last year with the Savage Mode 2. What do you yeah. do this year? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. think That's, he did that's an interesting point. But Maybe I'm wrong. Shout out to him for that list. And then to Feely, I don't know if you want to add in yours and what you got. But you got a list that you want to add? You know what, man? I'm going to keep it on Discord. Keep it on Discord. Yeah, it's Discord. exclusive on yeah. Discord. Yeah, for I like that. Yeah. Exclusive. So yeah, exclusive. If you want to see his on, on it, it's on Number Discord. one. Join us on Discord, by the way. Patreon.com forward slash diverse mentality. To join our Discord, it's literally the first tier of respect. $3 a month, you get access to my uncut YouTube videos, which are my Astral documentaries coming out. Uncut version of that you're going to get access to. And you get access to our Discord. By the way, for the wow. day one supporters, if you want access to our Discord, we're actually going to hook you up for supporting it for so long. So please pay attention to the comments. We are responding to you guys to try to get a reaction so you guys can come and join the Discord. These are for the day ones only. Mm -hmm. This is not going to be passed out for free to anybody. These guys are day ones who have been doing it since season one, episode one. So, yeah, respond to the comments. If you see a comment asking, do you want to join our Discord? And if you want to join it, respond to the comment. We'll get you an exclusive link that you can join in. So we love it. Yeah. Let's get it. Um, like I said, patreon.com forward slash diverse mentality. Uh, last list, Billboard Hot 100. And then we are officially done. So Adele, easy on me, number one, as we know. Always killing it. All I want for Christmas is you, Mariah Carey. Always it's number two now because of the holidays. Rocking around the Christmas tree. I wonder, I wonder if Brenda Lee knew this record would be such a long lasting track. Forever Classic. making millions. Yeah, number three. All because of streaming, by the way. These tracks are going back on the charts. Because usually it wasn't <laughs> yeah, streaming. That's crazy. Oh. Yeah. Stay, The Kid Larry and Justin Bieber, number four. A Holly Jolly Christmas, number five. Jingle Bell Rock, number six. <laughs> wow. I Hate You, SZA, number seven. Industry Baby, Lil Nas, Jack Carlo, number eight. Heat Waves, Glass Animals, number nine. It's almost a wonderful time of the year. It's almost that wonderful time, time of, of the year. year. All of these Christmas records. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what y'all give me for Christmas, man, for real? Yeah, man, we're going to give each other Jay, presents. Nobody's going to be nothing. All right, I see how it is. All right. I'll give you some candy. Uh, let's see here. A lot of Last Christmas, a lot of these Christmas sleigh ride. Um, let me skip through some of these because a lot of these are just, it's the beginning of luck to look a lot like Christmas. Stand number 21. A lot of these Christmas records are just dominating. Yeah, man, Christmas taking over. Super Gremlin. Oh, this, this record skyrocketed. Shout out to Kodak Black, bro. This record is fire. You got a hit. You got a hit, bro. That, Kodak. That, that sample on that track. Um, we could have been super style. Like that that sample is fucking fire, bro. Shout yeah, out to Kodak. Super grim. This jump from by the way, this on the last week was only fifty five. It wow, jumped up yes. to number twenty three. That's crazy. He's got a hit. Yeah. Kodak bro, Black man. back. You got the tunnel vision. Tunnel <laughs> vision. Now I'm super gremlin. So yeah, if you guys haven't heard that record, um, Super Gremlin, check it out. Kodak. I like Kodak. Yeah. Kodak Black. Kodak. Uh, way too sexy with Drake. Future Young Thug went down to number thirty nine. Um, let's see your knife talk. Drake Twenty One Savage Project Pat went down to number forty four from forty one. Um, a lot of Adele records have been falling off the charts too. Like the Oh My God that was number thirty seven. Now it's forty seven. Mm. Um, Juice World and Justin Bieber wandered to L A. Number forty nine. I gotta listen to that Juice World album by the way. Still haven't heard it. 
Uh, who wants to smoke with me? That's number 54. Oh, number 54. It's falling off the charts. It doesn't matter. Man. Girls on Girls, Drake Little Baby, number 55. Rod Wave by Your Side, number 61. Uh, Polo G featuring Little Baby, Don't Play, which is off the deluxe, number 66. Um, Bad Man, Smooth Criminal, which is the Michael Jackson sample, number 70, went up from number 84 to number 70. Um, let's see here. Family Ties, Baby Kim, Kendrick Lamar, number 76. 76. Let's see. Let's Drop. skip through. Young and Dumb, Polo G, number 87. Me or Some, Narda with Little Baby Future, number 86. Fair Trade, Drake, Travis Scott, number 89. Bubbly, Young Thug, Drake, Travis Scott, number 91. Started Up Again, Polo G, Money Bag, Yo, number 94. Poke It Out, Wale, J. Cole, number 99. Then Parting Ways, Polo G, number 100. These Polo Gs are new. Yeah, because the, yeah. the deluxe version of the album came out. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Polo G. And yes. that's it for episode 100. 100. YG 100. 100. Now, that doesn't sound right, but I keep yeah. it 100. But yeah, shout out to everybody supporting. Thank you. Uh, Spotify, Deezer, Pocket Cast. And we got a special guest coming down the line, so check it out. We're going to be, yeah. you know, we got some artists coming through, man, some cool people. So, yeah. Uh, definitely appreciate the support on those as well. So I got to show them love. Uh, yeah. Have an amazing night, day, whenever you listen to this. Be safe, and I'm out. Peace. Peace.